Hey there, today I'm gonna to go over with you using New Pandas Contact Import Wizard. All right, so um, in order to import data into New Panda, it needs to be in comma separated value format. That is a universal file type that any operating system can work with and create. Okay, so typically uh, what we hear most from users is, hey, I have my data, it's in an Excel file. How do I save it as a comma separated value? Uh, file. I'll show you that super quickly. We can't cover every kind of file type that you, your data might have. This is 98% of our of our users. So um, from the Excel file, oh, the other thing I want to point out really quick, uh, top row should be a um, column headers, okay? Not actual data, but um, describing the data that's in the cell below. So if, you're, if your file does not have that, um, you just insert a row at the top and create labels so that when you were mapping our data later, we're going to cover that in just a minute. It, um, you can understand, you're going to tell us what's going to go where. This is the last name. This is the first name. This is the email. All right, so um, make sure that you have that. You don't want any blank rows either, okay? All right, so um, quickly then, uh, to save your data, just go File, Save As, and then uh, make sure that you save your data um, in a place where you can find it, okay? The other thing that we hear a lot is, oh yeah, I saved it, but I can't find it. Um, so make sure that when you're saving it, that you choose a folder or your desktop where you can very quickly locate it because we cannot help you find it over the phone. All right, so uh, I'm gonna choose my desktop, going to save, uh, it's going to use the same name. You could change your name if you wanted to, okay? And then save as file type. I'm going to choose comma delimited. Now, you may have several options like I do. Macintosh, DOS, UTF-8. If you just have straight up comma delimited as an option, that's the one that you want to choose, okay? And here it's going to my desktop and I'm going to save. Now, I'm going to get a little warning message that says, hey, some features in your workbook night might be lost if you save it as comma separated. And that's absolutely fine. What that's referring to is if you had made some of the stuff bold or italic or used background colors, uh, et cetera, um, or did any uh, formulas uh, in, your, in your data. For new Panda purposes, you don't need that. And we're not changing the original file. We're simply making a copy of it. So that is absolutely fine. The other thing that it might warn you about in a separate um, warning is if you have data in multiple tabs, um, you can't save it all as one comma separated value file. Two options. Number one, um, just copy all the data onto one tab so it's all in one tab or just make a separate comma separated value file for each tab. Either way. All right. So when it's all happy, just go on and say yes. And it's going to save a copy of your uh, data. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. All right, so to get started, we're going for, to, uh, from the context menu, we're going to choose Import Export. And here we're going to use option A, Import a CSV file. These other options, by the way, are covered in separate videos. So now we're going to browse for the file that we just saved. I saved mine on my desktop, and it was just called Sample Data. So I'm going to find that, or Sample Data 2. And here I can see that it's a comma-separated value file, Microsoft Excel comma separated value okay so I'm going to say oh click on that to select it and say open it's going to show me that it found the data now I'm going to click the upload button now that's going to take us to the place where we map the data and this is where I told you the comma or excuse me the column headers were important because now I have to tell new panda which one of those columns had the first name well this did I can tell because I named it first because I'm a genius same for last name same for uh, email address. All right, so um, when you're mapping your data, um, I want you to also, as much data as you have, I want you to go ahead and map it. I know it would be super quick to just do the email address or the name in the email address, but what if later on you want to uh, use our mailing label feature for your holiday physical mailing, right? So make sure that you um, that you map all of the data that you have so that you can take advantage of all the features that we offer, okay? I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Um, I'm just going to uh, ask you to, to go ahead and um, take advantage of that. A minimum requirement when you're importing data is um, a name, 
okay so even if you only have an email address and you don't have a name just go ahead and map the data twice map the email address to the last name field and map the email address to the email field that'll be absolutely fine you can't proceed if you don't have one of these two all right and then when you have your data all mapped just go ahead and click proceed all right, now it's going to take you to the um, the import manager page. Uh, now what's going to happen is our system is going to take a look at all of the data that's already in New Panda, if there is any, and all of the data that you're trying to pull in. And it's going to say, hey, uh, what's going on with all this stuff? First of all, we're going to show you the way that you've mapped your data. Please check this carefully because this will tell you if you're doing it right or wrong. You want to make sure that you've mapped the first name to the first name column and the last name, you know, and all of that, okay? And this will alleviate problems later on when you go to email and uh, you had actually mapped the last name to the email field and now you can't email anybody, right? So check that very carefully and make sure that everything looks correct, okay? You can scroll up and down. You can scroll left and right. Give it a good once over so you don't have to do it again. All right, the next thing that you can do is you can uh, subscribe all of the incoming contacts to a group or groups. If you want to do that, just go ahead and do it here. Um, if you have a newsletter group um, that you want to add them to, or you might want to add them to some, you know, market alert group you've created, <clears throat> do that here. Here is where you may, um, if you're a newsletter, if you're a real estate edition user and you want to, subscribe all of the incoming contacts to your uh, newsletter, you may do that here. If you don't want to subscribe everybody, just leave that blank. You can manage your subscriptions later. That's covered in a separate uh, video, okay? The other thing is if you noticed up here, oh my gosh, I did it wrong. Um, this isn't the last name, it's the first name, right? You can just come down here and say change column mappings. It'll take you back to your data so that you can correct that before you import it and you don't have to start over. But uh, let's say that everything's happy. We're ready to, to go ahead and import it. We're going to hit that accept import button. Depending on how much data that you're bringing in, it may take a minute or two for our system to analyze everything. So, uh, you know, just give us a, a minute or two if you've got super ton of contacts. It's going to take you to the duplicate handling page. Uh, and so what we can do here is now if you're importing multiple contacts or you're just trying to update your data, you may want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and skip all the contacts, right? And you can either skip the duplicates and not import them, or you can choose auto update and merge, which will merge all the duplicates into one record with the incoming new data overwriting existing data. Okay, so you can absolutely avoid having to manage every single duplicate coming in. However, I do want to show you how you can manage, uh, since there's only a few here, let's just go over your, your options. All right, so um, this one recognized, it's got the same email address. So it recognized it, uh, a duplicate contact. So you could either say, I guess I want a separate record for Margot Abernathy versus Edward or Edmund, right? You could say insert it or, um, you could ignore it and say, no, I, I don't want to import this one at all. Or you could say, I want to update. Okay. So uh, Allison Munger uh, has a new email address now. And I know this is her new email address. So I'm going to say update this record. Right. And William Smith uh, looks like Bill Smith. Okay. So they may be two separate um, people, we don't know. However, I do see that their email address is the same. So I'm going to say, don't add this contact. All right. And once you're uh, through processing your choices, you're just going to say, process my choices. All right. And then it'll take you to the, uh, the confirmation page and tell you really how many contacts that you imported. Now, if you chose merging or updating, um, and you notice, so oh, I had 100 contacts in my incoming file, and it says that well, I imported 90. Well, if you chose imp uh, update or merge, um, the, your total imported is going to reflect the true number of contacts that you ended up with. All right, and that's a quick look at using the import manager.